So let's prove the Rabin Miller test for composite numbers. Uh, the theorem says if n is odd, we take away 1, we have an even number, we factor out all of the 2's and multiply it by q where q is odd. So n minus 1 equals 2 to the k times q. Now if a to the q is not congruent to 1 mod n and a to the 2i, 2 to the i times q is not congruent to negative 1 mod n, for all i between 0 and k minus 1, and for some a that's not divisible by n, then n is composite. This is a powerful test because about 75% of such a will be witnesses to a number being composite. So a lot of times we can very quickly and easily tell that a number is definitely composite. However, this test doesn't ensure that a number is prime. However, if a number fails um, these conditions for one a, then it might be prime, and the more different a's that we try, the more and more sure we can be that the number is prime. So it's a very useful test. Let's go ahead and prove it. And we will prove it by contrapositive. So we're going to let p be an odd prime. And our goal will be to show that it fails one of these two conditions. So either a to the q is congruent to 1 mod n, or a to the 2i times q is congruent to negative 1 for some i in this range. So let's take p minus 1, factor all the 2's, and multiply by the, the odd number. Now the trick here is to consider this list of numbers, a to the q, a to the 2q, a to the 2 squared q, all the way up to a to the 2 to the k q. Now note, and we're going to consider all of these, of course, mod p. Now this here is congruent to 1 because 2 to the k times q is p minus 1. And we have that p minus, sorry, p does not divide a by assumption. Therefore, gcd, p a is 1. So by Fermat's little theorem, this is congruent to 1 mod p. And now notice, every number in this list is the square of the number before it. And the last number is 1. So there's basically two different cases that can happen. Either the first number is 1, and then they're all 1, in which case we are done. Because then we would have a to the q is congruent to 1 mod n. So let's assume some number in this list is not 1. But then eventually that number is squared, and it becomes 1. So we want to consider now the solutions to the equation x squared congruent to 1 mod p, where p is prime. Now we know from previous experience that there are only... Hey, shut up! So now let's consider the equation x squared congruent to 1 mod p. Now we know from experience there's only two solutions, and they are x equals minus 1 and x equals 1 mod p. So what this tells us is, if there is a number that's not 1 on this list, then eventually negative 1 has to show up because when it's squared, it becomes 1. Only these two numbers, 1 squared, become 1 mod p. And so therefore, if one of these numbers is not 1, one of them has to be negative 1, and therefore a to the 2iq is congruent to negative 1 for some i in this range. And so by the contrapositive, this completes the proof.